So let's talk about what sugar does to your arteries. And probably the biggest damage from high amounts of sugar in the blood with a diabetic is done to your vascular system. And I want to talk about uh, what occurs in that state. So you have two things. You have the macrovascular system and the microvascular system. So the large vessels and then the small capillaries. In the large vessels, you have the coronary artery. That's the artery that uh, supplies the heart muscle, okay? And then you also have peripheral arteries throughout your body. And then you have the microvascular system, which goes to the retina of the eye. Uh, or the kidney, if you think about it, uh, what does the kidney do? It filters your blood. So you have the entire vascular system that gets filtered through the kidney. So you have a lot of capillaries in the kidney. Then you have these tiny nerves in your feet or your hands. Okay, so when you have high levels of sugar, it can create this damage and it's called peripheral neuropathy where your, your bottom of your feet or the fingertips become numb or painful or burning pain. And that progresses to a situation when you have more and more damage to the nervous system. And it could potentially get necrosis or literally like the, the tissue is rotting. And that's simply because of this. Sugar rusts out your vascular system. It creates all sorts of oxidation. And you can think about it like a, an old car that has rust on it. The same thing happens inside your arteries. They start to oxidize and you start seeing damage. The layer of the inside of the blood vessel is called the endothelium. And the endothelium controls the tone of the blood vessels. It prevents certain things from invading the blood vessel, so it acts as a barrier. And it's highly sensitive to too much sugar. So high levels of glucose mimic inflammatory initiators. So glucose creates inflammation in the arteries. And that's the very beginning stage of a sequence of events that end up as a blockage in your artery. It starts with an oxidation, damage, inflammation. Cholesterol will come in after the fact. So people are focused on the cholesterol, but that is just trying to heal this inflamed, damaged endothelial layer. The oxidation has both direct and indirect effects. I'm not gonna get into um, all the technical things about it, but it creates a lot of serious effects on the inside of the body that you don't really know are happening until you have a problem later in life. It'll also start thickening the inside of the uh, blood vessels, uh, creating stiffness. And then from the high sugar, you develop insulin resistance, which starts to create a decreased blood flow. And a lot of the neurological damage that occurs from having diabetes or high sugar comes from the damaged blood vessels that starve off the nerves. That's really what happens. Another effect that sugar has in the arteries is it creates these called AGEs, advanced glycated end products. And this is a very toxic thing to the arteries and to the rest of your body, uh, to the nervous system, to the brain, uh, to the pancreas. And then another thing that occurs when you have hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, is that you start to develop excessive amounts of sorbitol. Now, sorbitol alcohol, that's what it's called, starts to build up in the cells and starts accumulating fluid and starts to damage the cells in the retina. This leads to cataracts in the retina, which can eventually lead to blindness and then to the myelin sheath, which destroys the nerve. And that's why diabetics get the peripheral neuropathies in the feet, in the hands, and it starts spreading up this way because it starts to destroy the vascular system and the nervous system. And if you can't bring in oxygen and nutrition to the tissues, it starts to die. You get necrosis. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. Also realize that your body has the ability to make its own sugar if needed. It's called gluconeogenesis. And so does this same thing happen when your body makes sugar? No, it doesn't. Because your body also makes antioxidants that protects against the complications of high sugar. And these are the antioxidants that it makes because with glucose comes oxidation, comes high levels of free radical damage, okay? This is another reason why you should eat food high in antioxidants versus buying some pill that has an antioxidant. You should eat lots of food with antioxidants. 
Uh, you should beef up, no pun intended, your vegetable levels to prevent some of the complications of this high sugar situation. This is why diabetics that are eating healthier, that have uh, additional antioxidant support, have less complications from the diabetes. Another really good thing to take for some of these conditions is benfotamine. It's a fat-soluble B1 that can definitely protect the peripheral neuropathy from the complications of high sugar and also um, the kidney to a certain level and also the retina. But FYI, to be totally transparent, the research on these two were mainly done in animals, not humans. But I personally used uh, benfotamine with a lot of clients for peripheral neuropathy and have seen amazing, amazing results. So in summary, learn from the mistakes of others. Learn from this knowledge of what happens to your body when you eat too much sugar. And don't wait for these conditions to happen because a lot of the symptoms that occur with this don't show up for years until it's to the point where it might be too late. For more information on blood sugars and diabetes, I put some interesting videos on this board.